Second Timothy. You read my mind. I wanted you to be there. Thank you. <clears throat> Carla's going to help me read. Second Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to be speaking uh, the best I can in the short time that I have. Something that is very hard for us as individuals. I'm going to be speaking about relationships within the church. Relationships within the body of Christ. And as individuals. <clears throat> relationships are very, very difficult. We're totally different. Just like... Our fingerprints are different. We're different in personalities and character. Some of us are patients. patient. Some of us are not. Some of, some of us have impulse. Some of us are stubborn and prideful and arrogant. But all those areas that we struggle God is working on it. God is working on all of us. That's why we have to be very careful not to bring judgment upon a situation or a, or a person so quickly. In order for, for relationships to work, there's a couple of things that just I wrote in my notes, and we will get into the scriptures in a minute because I love the word of God. And first of all, a, a, a relationship, any relationship, I mean, just think about it, husband and wife. <laughs> I can speak a lot about that. I've been married for 23 years, and she still wants me to read her mind. It doesn't work, Soraya. It don't work like that. Right, Josue? Yeah. I don't care. No, I don't care. <laughs> she's not here. Don't worry about it. Oh, she's coming. Oh, no, that's Betty. <laughs> we think that we got all the, put, all, the, all, the, all the pieces put together, and we're so perfect as men, as women. And, man, the, the moment you get married, <laughs> I love the honeymoon. Too bad it doesn't last more than three months. Is that correct? Some of them laugh because it's the truth. You can, you can work on it to make it last another day. Or another year. Listen, if it's difficult to get along as husband and wife, or wife and husband, or friends, of loved ones, or people who are dating, if it's difficult to get along, can you imagine how the world is? For the Christian, it's harder. Because you have responsibilities as believers to follow according to the word of God. I haven't touched this scripture that I'm going to read to you. We're going to go through several scriptures, hopefully Hopefully, I have enough time to give you something practical about how to deal with relationships. First of all is, in order for relationships to work is open communication. Number two, let me look at my notes, because I can memorize it, but... Open communication. The other one is loyalty. I don't know why that came. I never have seen that in a book, read it. It just came to my mind. So I just brought it down. Open communication, loyalty, transparency. Let them see what's going on inside of you. And the last one is purity. Purity. You can add some more. Purity. See, when, when you're transparent, there's no room for pride. Let me go first to the first commandment, so to speak. The JC commandments, Joel Kanyamar commandments. 
of how a relationship can work. It's open communication. When you maintain an open communication between you and your spouse, between you and your friend, even males to males, females to males, it doesn't matter. Relationships are difficult. As a matter of fact, whenever you get a friend and you're, and you're developing as a teenager to adult, and you become close to somebody, that relationship was destined by God, was ordained by God. It wasn't a coincidence. Even if they drive you crazy, it is important to have those relationships, those friends around you. Because that's the only way in the old days how they sharp iron is iron sharpens iron. And they're difficult. It's not, it's not easy. When you maintain an open, an open communication, you don't have room for speculations. Because speculations would always leave you into confusion and lies. Speculations are not based, based in truth. I'm just going to follow what I'm hearing. Okay. Let me, let, me, let me present it to you this way. And we will, hopefully we'll read, a, we'll read something from the Bible. Let me present it to you like this. And this is, hear me good. Because if we don't practice this, if we don't elaborate this right we will always have issues, and they amount to big messes if we don't put our foot down. Do you think that Jesus was harsh, straightforward? Was what Jesus mean and the, and the instructions that he gave us in the Bible? Yes, he was tender, he was kind, but there was a time to rebuke. He will rebuke openly. And he can care less who got offended. The disciples would come to him and said, Rabbi, didn't you know you offended the Pharisees? <laughs> he, was, he came as a, a stumbling block to his people. And you read in the scriptures how straightforward he was to rebuke and to instruct. Let's read uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Go back a little bit, Carla. Proof to what? To teach? For correction, for training in righteousness, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Listen to the first word, profitable. How many of you guys got into or went into a business not expecting something to be profitable to you? Everybody. That's why you open a business. If you open a business, you're making no money. I don't know what planet are you from. So my question to you is, if we as believers, as Christians, would not study the word daily, how are you going to learn in the ways of the Lord? How are we going to receive instruction from the Lord? He says it's profitable for what reproof. The word of God, by reading it, it will reprove you. It will direct you. It will make you feel uncomfortable because you're not just reading the book. The book is reading you. And it's exposing things about you, yourself. Even as, after 30-something years of studying the word, it still speaks to my heart. I still find it very interesting. And sometimes I go like, ouch. Because this is, this is our only, you know, instructions how to get along with, with, with each other. How we can work together. Is that right? Let me, let me bring this out of the way. I, I'm going to bring you an illustration. Let's suppose they, there's a, a couple that coming together. 
or let's put it, two friends coming together at supper. And they're talking. And one, for the sake of names, let's put A and B. A and C. I'm just get over there. All right. Any and C C come together. And one of them begins to speak something to A and begins to rattle her cage, so to speak, because it was a situation that happened that brings such much such turmoil. And, be, and she begins to say things to her that really make, make that person angry. When that person leaves and goes away, just going to mean her own business, she doesn't, do, she doesn't know the damage that she just created because opening her mouth. So a friend comes over and realizes that she is in turmoil. She's, you can see the countenance of that individual. Because whenever you do something, it affects your countenance. So the friend said they're eating together and they go like, hey, you know, what's going on? Why, why are you so almost depressed? What happened? You can do two things. Reveal the name of the other person or what she spoke or he spoke towards you or keep it private to yourself and just share it. Can you... You know, I just had an incident with somebody, blah, blah, blah. But no, she, she goes and reveals. And listen, please don't be wondering about who this person is. I just made it up. There's, nothing, there's nobody here about what I'm talking about. Nobody in the church, nobody in Teen Challenge, nobody in Mexico. So don't even let your mind go over there. So just settle the account. <laughs> and just for the purpose of what I'm trying to teach you. So the person leaves. A stays together, B walks, walks away, and the moment, she, the moment he sees CC, guess what happened? The very thing that he heard from this individual is already bombarding her mind, his mind. As C sees the other person, the first, and it happened to all of us. How many of you guys have been involved in gossip? Come on, raise your hand. I know you have been in gossip. Oh, my gosh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him to Teen Challenge for lying. I've been involved in gossip in the past. And the moment I heard a gossip about such and such individual, the very t- time when I spot that person, the gossiping begins to develop in my mind, and I judge that person. But God did not create it to be like that. God did not allow this to happen, but we allow it to happen. So this is serious. What I'm speaking to you is very important. Because the moment there is gossiping, there's division. And the moment there's division... There's always room for a speculation. I wonder why such and such doesn't come to church anymore. But did you know that? Have you heard? I don't want to hear about it. The such and such did this. And it becomes, it, it multiplies and it grows into dispute and division and gossip and slander. And God doesn't want that. All right? You're you thinking, oh, yeah, maybe he's just in our time. He was 2,000 years ago. Even before that, let's go 4,000 years ago. Even when you speak something that, you know, uh, let me put it like this. In James, it talks about how powerful the word is. The, 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 the word of a man that is, literally speaks of the little tiny member called the tongue. Now think about it. It talks. It displays a vision for you to picture a forest being caught in fire. It's not talking about a forest. It's just a, it's a metaphor. It's talking about the people of God. Just one word made this forest to catch fire. 
Words are so powerful. They edify you. They build you. They can also destroy you. That's why it's important to meditate in his word. Daily. So, open communication, loyalty, transparency, and purity. I don't have time to get in every, every one of those words, but that's important to maintain your relationship with one another. To grow. So, hopefully under, you understand, and I'm going to give you more scriptures. Um, let's go. This is two things that we need to exercise as believers. One is in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. And the other one is in Timothy, I'm sorry, Titus chapter 5, verse 15. And we will go to the first one I just quoted. Hebrews 5, 14. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. Don't miss that word. Have their senses, what? Trained. To discern good and evil. When you practice, he says, the mature, and I understand we have babies, spiritually speaking, and people that are still growing. That's why whenever you hear an information about somebody, be wise. The scripture says that whenever there's so many words coming out, sin is never absent. And I am guilty. There's times I open my big mouth. My daddy used to tell me this because of my personality. I didn't have a problem careful in somebody, tell them the truth. But because I didn't know the ways of God, I got in a lot of trouble. And he used to say, I never forgot this, said, Using your big mouth, one of these days they're going to break your teeth. And I have gotten my teeth broken many times. Because of my big mouth. One time, almost literally, pow. But God can use any personality. It doesn't matter if you are Peter or Timothy. God will use that personality for his name's sake because he loves to show up with his trophies of glory. Oh, Joe, but I, 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 get, I explode with this anger, man. I got it from my father. No, no, no. Don't point to the father. Point to your heart. You can change. God can work with you. Nothing is impossible for him. It doesn't matter if it takes a year, two years, three years, five years. It doesn't matter. You stay in the way. You follow the Lord. You be obedient to what he's telling you. Not what your relatives are telling you. Not what your friends are telling you. I was tempted to talk about my testimony. <clears throat> where I came from. Because most of you guys... Don't know me. Very little. You know, I, you know I came from Mexico. But it will be for another time. The other scripture is in, go ahead and read it, Carla. Um, Titus chapter 1, verse 15. And give it up to Carla. Thank you, Carla. I just asked her. She wasn't prepared. Thank you. I just, I've never done this before, so I asked her if she can read the scriptures, she can help me, and she said she will, so and immediately she went to work. <laughs> Go ahead, Carla. Titus 1.15, to the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure, but both their mind and their conscience are defiled. There's a lot in that scripture. Mm. 
the pure. All things are pure. Why? Because you are approaching a situation from the eyes of a child. From the eyes of an innocent person. You're not so quick to judge. You're not so quick to move this little member. But you observe, you listen, you pay attention. Recently, Olivia told me, I'm sorry, Sophia told me something very interesting. <laughs> he said there's a reason why he created one mouth and two ears. I love when she speaks to me through her. And I went like, ouch. And he, he did it with respect. He doesn't just throw me or give me something just because she wants to. We were in a conversation. And the way our mind, my, I'm sorry, forgive me, the way my mind works is before you finish a sentence, I'm already trying to process how to answer you. And I jump and cut you off and I, I, I maybe present myself as rude to you, but it's just how my mind works. I remember one testimony years ago when I was growing up in Mexico because I have not discovered yet the issue that I struggle with. And I was a teenager. I didn't know how to read. I read slow, and it's not the reason why she's reading. I just have a lot of scriptures. But I will switch letters. I will switch names. Back then, that wasn't even detective yet. That's dyslexia. I think that's how they call it. I have a little bit of it. I have other issues concerning that. So, so Sophia, I'm sorry, Olivia has that too. But because she discovered early, she, we were able to work with her. And I remember when she was just 10 years old. And I'm listening to the conversation of this social worker telling us the issue that she had. And as I was listening, I told her, I said, so, I, I, you know, I know I had that. The same, what we're talking about. How was I able to overcome, to, 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 to live in society and to grow, become an adult and work and do all this stuff? And she said something very interesting that really, and this is as, an, as, a, as a person who, she was, this is secular, so the lady said to me, she said, because the reason why you were able to do that, because the mind is so powerful, it will help you to fix your words, to fix the, the letters and numbers. But that was very interesting. It was an eye opener. I was so grieved in my heart because how many of us in high school or elementary, we see somebody that we call them or people stereotype them as stupid. Oh, he's stupid. Oh, she's stupid. And we are guilty. We did that. That's why a lot of teenagers nowadays, they commit suicide because of the peer pressure coming against them. And we haven't, we are in a, in a time with, with God in this season they're discovering more and more tools to help people like me, like Olivia, like all other ones with ADHD or whatever it's called. And they're great to discover that. But I tell you, one that can really, really, the, the one that really helped me was this. The Lord even told me, he said, put your Spanish... Bible said, I want you to get English Bible. I said, Lord, I don't even know how to read English. In two years, he told me how to read. Was it because I'm sitting over there in the recliner and watching TV or going play soccer? No, I put myself to it. I went to it. I studied it. I read it. I went after the, 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 the Word of God, and it began to regenerate my brain. 
and create new cells that weren't even there. That happens to the extra addicts. God is amazing. The Word of God can purify you, can cleanse you, can prepare you, can, can transform you if you just, just take it daily. It's like manna to our soul, to our spirit. Let's go to second Titus. I'm sorry. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. You Titus, see what it says here. Titus 2, 11 through 12. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. Instructions. Instructing us. Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously. Hold on. To live what? Sensibly. And who's doing this? The Lord God. Who's doing this? God. What is what he's talking about, Titus? He has appeared. Who has appeared? The living word of God. His presence. Salvation. Go ahead. Continue, Carla, please. And live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Keep, keep reading. Looking for blessed hope and the appearing of the glory mm -hmm. of our, Lord, our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession. A people for his own possession. Zealous for good deeds. You know, the Bible also speaks about how jealously he desired the very spirit he created in you. And he waits, and he waits, and he waits. Years pass, and he waits. And God opens the door for you to hear the word through a co-worker, through a friend who invites you to church. And you harden your heart. And you walk away. He waits and he waits. Years passed. And still the person doesn't come to Christ. And he visits you at midnight to speak to you. And softens your heart. Begin to woo you. Is that a word? Woo to bring you to himself. By his spirit. You know, earlier when we were, when we were worshiping, Josue said something that triggered something in my mind. You know, I wasn't, I was a very cute sinner. <laughs> Good looking. You, you, you won't believe it, but I'm sorry, that's what I believed. With my long, kinky hair, I looked like David. And my little one-piston motors, I go, <laughs> like crazy. 14, 15, I used to steal the motorcycle from my brother. And uh, finally, he, uh, <laughs> finally, he gave up. Because every time he would come from work, <laughs> I don't know what was it. I mean, I, I come from school, and uh, the very time that I'm pulling the motorcycle, he's driving, coming from work. He was four years older than me, and I was always stealing the motorcycle. And I said all well, this to tell you. I wasn't a believer. I didn't come to Christ in my late 20s in the United States. That's why the Lord brought me here. But I remember the accident I had one time and this tiny motorcycle that he ended up giving it to me and I put this muffler on the side with a long pipe. I asked a welder to do it. And man, it was loud. I'm going like, I, will just, I wonder what I did to the neighbors. My man, that thing was loud. You think Harley Davidson is loud. 
It's more like, oh, bah, bah. and I love it because I will accelerate, and I release the, the acceleration, and then you will hear, bah, 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 you know, all this noise. She was crazy. So one time I'm going, I don't know, 45, maybe whatever kilometers an hour, and this semi is crossing and making a left turn. And when I, by the time I saw him driving, it was too late. So I'm going, there are two things. I go the other way, and I have an accident with the houses, because Mexico is not big. It's just, all the streets are small. Or I just go straight, break it, and see what happens. No helmet, no protection, 45 miles per hour, and all of a sudden, I just, I just going to do it. I break, and I was able to control the motorcycle, but it went, and it fell, and I end up going between the semi wheels right in between it and the stop the guy saw me he stopped if he would have continued i would not be here talking to you that's only one <laughs> i got several like that another time i'm in the united states 24 years old living in sin with somebody her brother uh asked me this is the lady I, I was living with. He said, Joe, let's go. Let's go ride the motorcycles. At this time, they had the Interceptor, the Ninjas, and all that stuff, you know. It's almost like a coffin on wheels. It is. They're, if you don't know what you're doing, you can kill yourself. Long story short, I'm, I said, yeah, let's go. I, I have my own motorcycle. Mine was a Cruiser. 500 CX. The first cooling engine motorcycle. But they insisted, hey, you know, I'm going to go to the flower shop on my mom, and you, you're welcome to drive it. So I'm going like, okay, and I wear my helmet, I have my jacket. 75 miles per hour in a curve that was very, very sharp. I went straight. By the grace of God, I did not kill myself. I was going too fast. And I was learning how to use this motorcycle. I didn't know how to lean and all that stuff. I said all that to tell you is we got so much to thank him. I don't know why I have those memories. I have forgotten it. But I was there when Josue was saying about worship. Sometimes there's something, you know, we have so much to thank him. The very thing that God has given you a chance for you to be here is because he's delaying your death. He delayed for you not to die because you could have died in your misery before you came to here to get to know him. Not that the church will save you, but God himself and his intimate relationship with you will save you. But we all have the chance to come to him. And by the grace of God, I'm not in hell right now because I was living in sin. I deserve to go to hell. But his grace and his, his mercy, his compassion, I have so much to thank him. Don't forget where you came from. Remember where you came from. Remember your childhood, how many times he spared you. That's why, that's one of his names. That's one of his attributes. He's a long-suffering God. Man, where is the time going? Maybe I just have to preach this part, of the, the other half of my message another time. But for the sake of time, I'm going to read two scriptures and we wrap it up. Go to Job chapter 5, verse 17. This is the very first scriptures I began to memorize. Because I knew I was a son of God. I knew that sons had to be disciplined. And there was a lot of areas in my heart that needed to be disciplined. Listen to what he says. Job 5 verse 17. Behold, how happy is the man whom God reproves. Hold on, hold on. How what? Happy. Happy. Listen, when you discover the mystery of why they... 
why that person is happy. Why is he saying that? How happy it is the man, what? Reproves? You saying, and being reproved, and being point out, and being, and bringing discipline in your life brings happiness? Keep reading, Carla. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. For he inflicts pain and gives relief. Hold on. For he, for he what? Inflicts pain. He inflates pain. Who does it? The devil? <laughs> you don't know God like we're supposed to know him. And you think that was in the Old Testament. No, the New Testament is even stronger. You think we can get away with because we're not abiding by the law? The commandments of God is even harder. See, the standards of the world is like this right here. But the standard of the cross surpasses the standards of the world. Even when you're right. The commandments of Jesus are harder than the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, he says, if you commit adultery, they will stone you. In the New Testament, he says, if you look upon a woman with desire in your heart, you have already committed adultery. So tell me which one is harder. Thank God, thank God that we don't have stones around here. <laughs> a lot of us will be stoned, Right? He said statements like this, hear me, and I don't have time to get into the word, but listen to me. He said, oh, but I have a fire that I wish was already kindled. That's Jesus. If you don't believe me, read Matthew 25, 24. And see how many times he called them blind. Wash, wash clean tombs full of dead bones. To his people he came, and his own people rejected him. I was wounded, according to Isaiah, uh, Zechariah said, I was wounded in the house of my friends. They pulled his beard. They rejected him. How many have seen the, the, uh, the Chosen, the, the program The Chosen? Are you watching the last ones, the last event, the last episode? I'm telling you, you watch that. If that doesn't bring tears in your heart, I cry the whole thing. So, Sophia has already seen it and was telling us three episodes. We watched it with her and we cried in every single episode. It's so well made. Anyway, so that was in Job, but it's also in Jeremiah. Actually, in Hebrew. Well, hold on, Carla. <laughs> I got you all over the place. Few more, few more minutes. Just hang with me. Just, all right? Let's go to this. It's something practical. Go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Rapidito, rapidito. Hurry up. Hurry Galatians up. 6, 1. Verse 1. Listen to what it says, okay? Brethren, even if a man is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself, lest you too be tempted. I can preach to you, but I want the word to preach to you. The living word, what, I just, what we just read. It's not just a paper with ink. This is the word of God through the mouth of Paul to the church in Galatia. Giving instructions because that division was happening everywhere. It's in 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus. It's 1st and 2nd Thessalonians where all the T's come together. All that instruction is there. You who are more spiritual, or you who are spiritual, re restore that person in the spirit of meekness or gentleness. Keep reading that verse at the end, the, the last 
Verse 2, bear one another's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he... Wait, 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 wait a minute. Do you realize that there is a law, the law of Christ, that we have to fulfill? You didn't know that Christ had a law. It is. It's right there. We just read it. The law of gentleness, the law of meekness, the law of love. I wish, I wish some of you will come Wednesday nights because we get into stuff like this. And sometimes we go on rabbit trail and it's amazing. Right? Supporters. Amen. <laughs> and this is the last one. Matthew chapter 18. This is from the mouth of Jesus. And this is, I wrap it up. And let you go, so like Josue said, so you can have your chimichangas, your Matthew, rice with beans. Matthew 18, 15. This is the instruction of Jesus. Listen to what Jesus says. And if your brother sins, go and reprove him in private. If he listens... Uh, uh, how? In private. If your brother sins, you go and reprove or talk to that individual in private. You, it's not talking about a pastor, it's not talking about an evangelist, it's not talking about a teacher. You and me have that right, as long as you do it in the spirit of meekness. And believe me, because the word brings exposure, you will be tested with these words that we're reading. God will test you, character, because he doesn't want you to stay stuck in yourself. He wants you to break the shell and come out what he created in you. The real person that God made in you and I come out of that shell. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of friction. <laughs> and I don't have time to go into the pearls. But each gate in the heaven of Jerusalem, there is a gate of pearl. Did I finish? Did we finish that verse? Go ahead. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. Keep, keep going. But if he does not listen to you, take one or two more with you, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every fact may be confirmed. Okay. So this is the instructions of Jesus. He's telling you how... To do something, to, to, to have a healthy relationship within the church. You have no business going and tell another brother and then go to the pastor or come to us after you have confessed or grumbled or complained to somebody else. Your business is to go to that individual, to talk to that person in private and say, hey, this is what I've seen. Is that okay? We can talk. See, we, we don't exercise what the first church of the way, how it was called, the way. We don't exercise that. Read Corinthians. They give you all the instructions. And it goes even deeper. He says, when the person doesn't listen after you have two or three witnesses, and you, the Bible said to bring it to the church. You're talking about embarrassment. It makes the person uncomfortable. I'm sorry if I'm telling you this and you find yourself being offended. I've just read the word to you. Actually, Carla read it. Blame it on her. Listen, guys, please. <laughs> human nature is human nature. It's still there. Yes, we're dead to the world. And the world is crucified to us. But you still have to put it to practice. You have to exercise what you just read. Because the very, the very person that you are is there and it's going to come out. 
That's what I'm telling you. Relationships are difficult. Not just the relationship between one another, but the relationship you have with God. Because God, because the Lord will say things to you that it will wound you. Yes, he wound, like what we just read in Job. But it is for good. Listen, when when my little girls, my girls when they were little, whenever they had an infection, a, a thorn in their skin and they walked barefooted, and I as a daddy want to help them, whenever I, t- I will take that needle after I light it up to kill any germs, they will scream just to get that thorn out. But if I told them, I said, if I do not remove it, it will get infected. And sometimes that infection will cost you a lot. The longer you wait, the more that it will grow. And I'm talking about spiritual things of your heart, your spirit, your soul. God came to redeem you, redeem your soul. To enlighten your spirit. The flesh is going to be flesh. Your body is going to be body. That's why we get cavities. That's why we get older. He did not come to redeem this, the, the body. But as we learn from that and, and, and embrace it, God will be able to work with you. Even if it hurts. Let him bring that needle, that knife, and cut that infection. That I keep uh, yellow stuff that comes out. I've been there. I walked barefooted at my childhood, and I got many infections. And my mother had to do it, or my daddy, and it hurts. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Facebook. I don't know if we're still on Facebook or not, but thank you for being with us. The best is yet to come. Thank you, brother. I'm going to let him play for a little bit. And and what I just said, I want you just to close your eyes where you are as he plays the keyboard. And I want the Lord to speak to you. If anything that I said, anything that Carla read, really ministered to you. And believe me, I cut half of my scriptures. I pray that the Holy Spirit bring conviction in your heart. Because in His kingdom, there's no room for division. In His kingdom, there's unity. There's compassion. There's grace. The grace is surpassing, surpasses all your understanding. Nobody knows you better than your older brother, Jesus. He's closer than a friend. He's closer than a brother. He's the one that created your DNA. He's the one that created the numbers that have numbered your hairs on your head, even if you don't have it like mine. Just spend one, two minutes just with him and let him speak to you as he's been speaking already.